Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to Set Apart, Calendar of the Most High Yahweh, Part 2. All right, as always, we give all honor, glory, and praises to the Most High Yahweh, brothers and sisters, in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, our King and High Priest, appointed to rule over Yahshua by the Most High. Brothers and sisters, Let's get directly to this calendar and explaining it. But first, I need to read from Ecclesiasticus. I missed this scripture here <clears throat> in the last video. So this is Ecclesiasticus chapter 43 of Sirach, Wisdom of Sirach 43. The pride of heavenly heights, of the heavenly heights, is the clear firmament. The appearance of heaven and a spectacle of glory. Now, I just want to briefly mention, if you go outside and look up, you're going to see a clear firmament up there. So you're going to see right through it to the waters above. When the sun hits that waters, just as it hits the waters below, it looks blue. It is that simple. If you ever rode in a plane or a helicopter, you look down and you'll see those blue waters or been on a boat. All you got to do is look up. You'll see the same thing up there, except for it's being held back by a clear firmament. Brothers and sisters, that's right. There is no outer space. There's the heavens up there, though. Once you get past the waters, you know, you got to get through the clear firmament first. Then pass the waters. But anyway. The appearance of heaven. In a spectacle of glory. The sun. When it appears. Making proclamation as it goes forth. Is a marvelous instrument. The work of the most high. At the noon. At noon it parches the land. And who can withstand this burning heat. A man tending a furnace. Works in burning heat. But the sun burns the mountains. Three times as much. It breathes out fiery vapors, and with breath, with bright beams, it blinds the eyes. Great is Yahweh who made it, and at his command it hastens on its course. He made the moon also to serve in its season to mark the times and to be an everlasting sign. From the moon comes the sign for feast days, a light that wanes when it has reached the full. So the moon has its portion to do just as the sun governs. Those portions as the head. The sun governs the feast. The sun governs the Sabbaths. The sun governs the years and the days. But its help me does as it does its phases as well for a sign. They work together. The month is named for the moon, increasing marvelously in its phases, an instrument of the host of high shining forth in the firmament of heaven. The glory of the stars is the beauty of heaven, a gleaming array in the heights of, the, of Yahweh. At the command of the Holy One, they stand as ordered. They never relax in their watches. That means they'll never change. They will never change, ever. So let's get to the simplicity of this calendar. Start with day one. I mean month one and day one. Right here is the fourth gate. As we read in part one. The first month. You come through the fourth gate. And it will stay in that gate. On the east and in the west. For that full month. And the first day is actually the fifth day of creation. Why? Because the Most High created the sun, the moon, and the luminaries on day four. He was creating during this day. During day four. He was creating. And when it was done, he saw it was good. Even in the morning was the fourth day. And... He started everything in motion so that it can bring heat upon the earth because he's, he created life during this day. And that's why this is day one. 
and this is the end of the year right here. Okay, I need to mention um, how to test this particular day being day one on the fifth day of creation. Uh, we know that the Passover is on the 14th. We know that it was in the middle of the week when Hamashiach or the Messiah died, right? It was in the middle of the week. So when you count 1 through 14, you'll land right here in the middle of the week. And this is exactly in the middle of the week. Three days this way, three days that way. Everything lines up. He was in the grave for three days and three nights. And he rose at the end of the Sabbath, right? And... Uh, Miriam and who else was with her um, saw him that morning on the first day of the week. So that's another way you can test this calendar for accuracy, brothers and sisters. The only thing that would be would be whether this day is the equinox. Now, the Mosai's calendar always end on day 364, and it's always an equinox day. What that means is it's an equal day. You have 12 hours of the daylight and 12 hours of night. Equal day and equal night. Now, according to um, some information on the app that I've researched, this was the equinox, March 16th. And some other people got it on the 20th. So we're going to have to figure that out along the way. Which one is the equinox? Is it March 16th or is it March 20th? So that's something you can research right along with me. But as long as you get that right, the equinox, you will know that that's day 364, according to what we read in the book of Enoch. That's day 31 of the 12th month and according to the Gregorian calendar that was March 16th and that's how you have March 16th here 17, 18, 19 so we know that there's Sabbath days or uh, our Sabbath days it's going to be on Thursdays all this year according to that information on their calendar but on our calendar it's going to be day 7 so you have the third day on this first week, 10th day, 17th, 24th, so on and so forth on the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week. And the Most High's calendar will never change. Year for year, every first month, you're gonna, it's going to be on the 3rd, the 10th, 17th, and the 24th, the Sabbath days for this month will always fall the same. Year in, year out, this will never change. But the Gregorian calendar changes because it's different. And so does all the other calendars. They will change, but the Most Highs won't. You can see the foundation of the, of the seven-day creation count laid for the entire year and forever. One through seven, one through seven all the way through for 52 weeks every year every year 52 weeks and the cycle continues this calendar will never change year in year out it won't change now the Gregorian spot may change we'll get to that in a minute but on this first day Um, well, let me explain the boxes first. This is the yearly sun count box. On every day, it's going to be right here. You're going to count 1 through 364 days in this box. This is your star constellation box right here. And you're going to see this constellation um, change. but And they're going to remain the same year for year this same constellation will pop up and it, it won't change its phase year for year 
just like the sun will never change. But we know the moon does change, right? One month it's over, it, its phases are shorter. One month is longer, you know. It comes in 10 days too soon, as the scripts say. So, this is the reason why I left this box open, so that we can draw the moon phases in ourselves and put the percentage of the moon and color in the, the illumination of the moon for that day. And we're going to do this for the next three years. If you decide you want to participate in this. And also you can download this calendar for free brothers and sisters and test this uh, with me. So it's either in the description box or I pinned it to the top of the comment section. And uh, it's going to be on my website as well. So I got to make a full page for that. So that might not be on my website uh, where you can download the calendar just yet. And as soon as I get that together, it'll be on there. But it will always be on this video unless it get taken down or something. But anyway, and let's move on. This box here is for the monthly day count 1 through 30 or 1 through 31. That's what this box is for. And of course you got the. Um, let me see. The Gregorian calendar box. Right here. And we need the Gregorian calendar. In conjunction with the Most High calendar. Why? Because we live in their world. We need to know what day of the week it is. We go to work. You know, we, we got doctor's appointments and other things we do in their world. So we do need that. That's why I put the Gregorian calendar on here in this box. Now, this box right here, this box on this day, this is the feast day box. Our other box, you know, when it's empty, when there's no feast day, you can write things in their apartments whatever you want to put in these boxes or draw a line and write it out doctor's apartment such and such whatever case it is you know but um that's pretty much the ground floor of this calendar brothers and sisters now let's get to the feast days itself uh Right here, I forgot, you got your 52 weeks a year count. 1 through 52 all the way down. I think I mentioned it. But anyway, I mentioned it again if I didn't. Or if I did. Um, you're going to count 1 through 52. And that's never going to change. So this box, that box, this box, and that box will remain the same year for year. Gregorian probably going to change every year because they got an extra day. Sometimes a two extra days. And the, of course the sun, the moon phases changes. So we got to keep an eye on the moon phases for the next three years. And we're going to get a good understanding of its phases. And uh, the sun phases as well. Uh, I didn't put that in here. We're probably going to have to make another chart for the sun phases. On how it um, increases and decreases in light. Not that it's not brighter. But it, its cycle is wider or far away from us. At one point in time. To where the light doesn't reach us. Uh, we'll have to do that. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, next year or something but first let's get used to this first and test all this out we can learn the rest along the way and so up here also before I get to the feast days 
I left it blank so we can put our Paleo Hebrew names of the months up here. But we still need to have the first month right there signifying so we can know um, what that Paleo Hebrew month represents. And over time, we're not going to need to put first month, you know, because we'll know what that Paleo Hebrew month represents. It represents the first month. So, but for now, let's keep it there till we get to know our calendar over the next two or three years. All right. On this first day of the month, you were to blow the trumpet every first of of the month and you got the scriptures right here that you can go read about that so 12 times a year on the first of every month you have to blow the trumpet to signify the beginning of the month that's the most high's will let's get it done and also this is a feast of Noah day right here Memorial of Noah, first day of the first month in Jubilees. You got four days that we supposed to celebrate this. Just like you got um, four season change days at the end of um, the third month, at the end of the sixth month, at the end of the ninth month and at the end of the twelfth month, you got that extra day making it day 31. Well, the very next day is day one of that season. And we are to celebrate that day one of, of each season change. Right after the season change day, you celebrate the memorial of Noah because it signifies what the Most High is saving us. And let's go get that in scriptures. Jubilees chapter 6 verse 23 through 29. Now there was a mistranslation here. It's, it should have been first day of the first month right here. They put new moon. So we got to watch these heathens. And on the first day of the first month. And on the first day of the fourth month. And on the first day of the seventh month. And on the first day of the tenth month are the days of remembrance and the days of the seasons and the four divisions of the year. These are written and ordained as a testimony forever. This is forever, y'all. And no ordained them for himself as feasts for the, for the generations forever so that they have become thereby a memorial unto him. And on the new, on the first day of the first month, he was bidden to make for himself an ark. And on that day, the earth became dry and he opened the ark and saw the earth. That's why you celebrate that first day, that first month, that first day of the first month. This is what you're going to be celebrating for that month. Then when you get to the fourth month on that first day of the fourth month, the mouths of the depths of the abysses beneath were closed and you're going to observe that for memorial forever on the fourth month right along with blowing that trumpet you know to signify the first of the month you're going to be doing this as well and on the first day of the seventh month all the mouths of the abysses of the earth were opened and the waters began to descend into them when you get to the seventh month you're going to do that as well and on the new moon of the 10th month, I mean, and on the first day of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains were seen and Noah was glad. And you're going to observe that portion. And on the first day of the 10th month, and on this account, he ordained them for himself as feasts for a memorial forever. And thus are they ordained. And they placed them on the heavenly tables. Each had 13 weeks. That's per season. There's 91 days and 13 weeks per season. Four seasons every year. From one to another past their memorial. From the first to the second 
and from the second to the third, and from the third to the fourth. And all the days of the commandment will be fifty-two weeks of days, and these will make the entire year complete. Thus it is ordained, I mean engraven and ordained on the heavenly tables. Y'all see that? Let's go back. So that's where this memorial comes in at. On the first month, first day of the first month, on the fourth month, on the seventh month, and on the first day of the tenth month. So now that we got that covered, we know what we do on the first. We blow the trumpet here and we observe this memorial of Noah. Then on the 14th day, we do the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is a high Sabbath. This is a regular Sabbath. And this is a high Sabbath, the last day, right? Then after this Sabbath, you start the Feast of Weeks. And you are to um, celebrate that first day. And then you do your count. Now, right up here, y'all notice I got 100 observance days. Uh, these are how many days we have something we have to do uh, throughout the year on those 100 days. Now, this doesn't even include the 58 count days of the feast weeks. So you celebrate this first day and then you start counting to 50, right? Well, we don't exactly do nothing else but count. So I didn't include those 48 days. But we do celebrate the 50th day. Let's get to the second month. So as you can see, we continue our sun count. We're in the fifth gate. It's the constellation and it changes here. You got your 1 through 30 count in this box. And your Gregorian calendar right here. And remember, we have a second Passover during the second month. If you missed the first month, you were unclean somehow or who knows what was going on. Locked up. You get out, but you know. <laughs> and uh, you are to celebrate it here on the 14th day. Right here, brothers and sisters. All right, let's move on. Now, on the first, we're blowing the trumpet because it's the first of the third month. We're in the sixth gate now. We're still continuing our sun count, our constellation, and we started 1 through 30, 30 uh, again. Well, this is a season change day. So it's 1 through 31 during this third month. And you have uh, day 50 that we must celebrate right here. Notice it started on a Monday. Uh, not a Monday. It started on the first day of the week. And it's ending on the first day of the week. Let me go back to the first. See, it started on the first day of the week. And it's ending on the first day of the week. Day 50. And it would never change. It will always be this day. Day 74 and day 14 of the third month will always be your 50th day. You'll never go wrong. These three boxes will never change. Even if the Gregorian changes. Most High's calendar never would change. If we was in our land, we wouldn't need the Gregorian calendar. We could toss that out. And we wouldn't have to deal with that. All we would have to uh, learn is the phases of the moon on this chart. But anyway, you got your season change day, the 31st, every three months, every 90 days. You get that 31st day, so you got 91 days every season. Now remember, we're ending this season, we're beginning another one. So you know another memorial of Noah's coming up. The end of summer, the beginning of, I mean, the end of spring and the beginning of summer. So we're back in the sixth gate because we're starting to count over again, six through one. It already counted 
down. I mean, it already counted up to six. Now it's counting from six to one. And then it would switch again from one to six. Then again, and over and over, it never changed. Six gate will always be in this fourth month. And you continue your sun count, you blow the trumpet, you observe the memorial of Noah. Uh, you're blowing the trumpet because it signifies the first of the fourth month. And you continue your 1 through 30 count. And then your sun count, your constellation count, so on and so forth. Let's go to the fifth month. Again, you're in the fifth gate, counting down, sun count. You were blowing the trumpet because it's the first again of the fifth month. And uh, so on and so forth. Let's go to the sixth. So now you're in the fifth gate. You continue your sun count. You blow the trumpet to signify the beginning of the, the sixth month. You got your constellation, your Gregorian calendar, continue on. You're, you're putting in the phases of the moon right here in its percentages right down there in the, in the corner. You continue on that till you get to what? The end of summer. You got a season change day, day 31. So you know what's about to come at the beginning of the next season. But you also got an equal day and equal night here. Every six months, there's going to be an equal day and equal night on the 31st. That happens twice a year. Twice a year. Two equal day and equal night. At the end of the sixth month and at the end of the twelfth month. You can never go wrong with the Most High's calendar, everyone. So let's get month seven. So we then started a new month in the third gate. On the seventh month, you continue sun count, your constellation, and we're going to blow the trumpet to signify this is the first of the seventh month. Then we also going to do memorial uh, uh, of the blowing of the trumpets on that day, and we're going to do a memorial of Noah for this season. Directly for this season. Now, and of course on the 10th, you got the Day of Atonement. And on the 15th of the 7th month, you got the uh, Feast of Tabernacles. And as y'all notice, I put scriptures, scripture references for each one. And just in case y'all didn't understand some of those abbreviations, I put the constellations here. Now, we're going with their constellations for now until we understood understand our own Hebraic paleo const uh, uh, constellations so that's subject to change in the future and one day when we get all this together we're, we're going to make a permanent calendar uh, for everyone uh, right now this is our test calendar so you're doing your feast of tabernacles the first day of course is a high sabbath you to treat it as a regular sabbath and the eighth day is a high sabbath you treat it as a regular sabbath day and you'll never go wrong with the sabbaths because they will always line up perfectly every month 3 10 17 and 24 for the seventh month will always be the same it will never change Never. That's the most high in this calendar. It's easy, it's simple, and it it, it it stays the same. Now we're in the second gate. We continue our sun count, constellation, and because it's the first of the eighth month, we're blowing the trumpet signifying that and we continue on our Gregorian and we're cut we're drawing in the phases of the moon. For the 30 days. Let's go to the ninth month. We're at the end. Of another season. The end of fall. We're in the first gate. During this ninth month. The ninth month will always be. 
the sun entering into the first gate. We continue our sun count. Constellation. Day one, we're blowing the trumpet. Because at the first of every month, we blow the trumpet to signify the beginning of the month. And of course, the Gregorian drawing in the moon, so on and so forth, till you get down to day 25, we start the Feast of Dedication. You can read about that in these scriptures here. And that runs for eight days. And you got a season change day right here. Extra day added. Day 31. Season change day. So you know the next day. This beginning a new season of winter. It's going to be what? Memorial of Noah again. So again you're going to blow the trumpet on this first day. Because it's the beginning of the 10th month. You're going to celebrate the memorial of Noah. And you're going to finish off the 8th day of the Feast of Dedication on this day every year. This will never change. It will be always the same. And you'll be in the first gate. And of course you continue your count 1 through 30. 11th month. You're in the second gate. You're counting up now. 1 through 6. You're going up in the gates now. You continue your sun count. You got your constellation right here. You're blowing the trumpet again to signify the first of this 11th month. And of course you're going to draw on the moon and so on and so forth to, to, the, to the 30th day. Let's go to the 12th month. So again, we're into the third gate in the, in the 12th month. This is the end of winter. You continue your sun count. You got your constellation. You're blowing the trumpet here, signifying the beginning of the 12th month. Continue coloring your uh, moon phases, Gregorian calendar, until you get here. There's a feast day here, Ezra 6, 15 through 18. Now, I wasn't sure we were supposed to do this year for year because I didn't read anywhere where it says this is ordained forever. But I included it anyway because it was a feast day dedicating a temple where they, where the Greeks were sacrificing, well actually our people and the Greeks, sacrificing pig, pigs and pig blood was being splashed all over the place on that altar. So they tore it down and they hid it and they rededicated, they rebuilt the altar and they rededicated it that day. So y'all go read about that. And if I'm wrong about uh, what I just said, y'all let me know. And we will take this feast day off of there. But for now, I'm going to keep it there as something we should observe. Until we find out otherwise. Now right here, on the 13th day of the 12th month, which they call it Adar. But we know it's different in Paleo Hebrew. Uh, there's a feast day, a Judas day, where Judas Maccabees and, and the rest of them who was with him, uh, the Most High saved Zion through them on this day. And they celebrated this day. Now, later on, um, uh, no, no. Was this before this or after? I think this came before. But anyway, on the 14th and the 15th, we are to celebrate the Feast of Mordecai and Queen Esther. This is their day. Where the Most High used Queen Esther and Mordecai to save Zion. Y'all see these different foreshadows of salvation and people still got problems with Hamashiach being a hand of the Most High salvation. But they don't trip out when they see the Most High using Mordecai and Esther being the hand of his salvation. Or Judas, Maccabees, or any of the other ones that the Most High used to be his hand of salvation for Zion. He saved us many times. His salvation has always been with us. Moses lifted up that serpent to stop all the killing. You know, through the hand of Moses, he saved Zion. 
one would come like unto Moses. Moses was the hand of the Most High Salvation. This other one that's coming from on high would be the hand of the Most High Salvation too. Y'all see that? Easy, real easy to understand if you open your eyes, open your ears, open your heart, open your open everything up to the most high. He got all these foreshadows of good things happening right in our faces. But when someone come along saying something crazy, people are quick to latch on to that as the truth. But anyway, we get down here to day thirty one, which is the end of the season. Season change day and an equinox day, equal day, equal night, the last day of, um, of the year, as we read in Enoch 72, 34 through 35. The last day will be day 364 on a season change day every year. And we know the next day we will be right back starting over everything again. So you got 100 days. Let me um, pull up the calculator. And let's calculate this. The feast days. So we know we got 52 weeks every year. That's 52 Sabbaths that we must observe every year. You got 12 days. You got to blow that trumpet for, for the 12 months. Right? During that first day. You got those four days of Noah. On the first month. The fourth month. The seventh month. And the tenth month. You, we must observe. That's extra four days. Now let's count our Passover. And Feast of Unleavened Bread days. That's eight days right there. You have the first day of the Feast of Weeks. And the last day, which is the 50th day we observe, that's two days. Now, if you want to count the other 48, that's up to you. Uh, but I know that we're not commanded to do anything specific on a day besides count the day. That's the reason why they include it. But anyway, let's move on. You got the um, Feast of Tab... No, the, the Memorial Blowing of the Trumpets. You have uh, the Day of Atonement and you have the eight days of the Feast of Tabernacles. That's ten days. Let's add ten to that number. Then you got eight days of the Feast of Dedication. Let's add that eight. Wait a minute, what did I do? Did I multiply? Minus eighty-eight. Now let's do plus eight. Yeah, I multiplied. So you, we added eight days for the Feast of Dedication. Then we got those four days we just went over. The one from Esdras, the one from Judas, and the two days from Mordecai and Queen Esther. That's four days. What does that equal? 100 days. 100 days y'all there's something we must do 100 days a year and you got the scripture references for each one on this calendar now I know some of you can add other scriptures that will add to these things and y'all more than welcome to do that if you like so brothers and sisters um, this will conclude this particular video remember you can download the calendar I'm going to have a link to download the full calendar in the description box below. You may have to download month for month. That's fine. Make you a folder. Put it all in there. Print it out. Put it on your wall. And get to observing, brothers and sisters. Oh, and finally, as you can see, um, the Sabbath day is on a Thursday, according to the Gregorian calendar. Why? If you look at the equinox, which is March the 16th, it's a Monday. So that ends our day right here on day four of the creation week count. And, and this is day one, which is the 17th. 
which is a Tuesday. Day two for the Most High is is the 18th, which is a Wednesday. And day three, which is a Sabbath day, is the uh, 19th, which is a Thursday, according to their calendar, as you can see. And so, this is why we've been off following the Gregorian calendar and its one through seven count and celebrating the wrong Sabbath days. Now, if this was the change, if we were to bring this March 20th Friday right here, then the 21st would be Saturday, the 22nd Sunday, the 23rd Monday. Then that would mean all the Sabbaths would be on their Monday. But this will never change. The most highs would never change. Y'all see this? If we was in our land, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't have no need to, for this thing to rotate and switch around. But for the full year, it's going to be on Thursday. Then next year, it may slide to a Wednesday. But according to the Most High calendar, it wouldn't change. It's just because their calendar is 365 days. And we only need it because of dates and, you know, uh, uh, work appointments and stuff like that. But if we could throw it out, we could throw out the rest of that confusion, that confusing calendar. And one day we will throw away the, their complete confusion out of our lives. And this box will never exist again. But this here will never change year from year. With, without the Gregorian calendar, you will land on these same days every year. And y'all going to see what I'm talking about, how it's going to shift next year because of that one day. And it's going to change how the uh, Mosai's calendar fall on the Gregorian calendar by one day. And we're going to see this, for this is a test calendar. So with that said, brothers and sisters, I'm going to say Shalom. Thank y'all for tuning in. And... um. May the Most High barack you and open up your eyes and bring you into his true covenant, his true culture and heritage that he's given to his chosen 12 tribes and the grafted in. Hallelujah. <laughs>